Romans 9, 1-33 Devotional Focus Verse And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. Romans 9, 10-12 Sibling rivalry in a family with five children takes many forms, as my husband and I have learned. In our five, three girls and two boys, ongoing banter revolves around the fact that our oldest daughter is adopted. She is fond of teasing her younger brothers and sisters. Mom and Dad chose me. They just had to take what they got when you came along. Today's focus verse speaks of the purpose of God according to election. The Greek word translated election means divine selection or chosen. I will never forget the day we chose our daughter. A couple who had adopted 12 Korean children attended one of our church services, and my husband and I spent some time chatting with them afterward as his parents were living in Korea at the time as missionaries. Since the two of us had talked about adopting a Korean child sometime in the future, we also were understandably intrigued when this couple brought their 12 children with them into church. We found that they had been longtime sponsors of a small orphanage in Seoul, South Korea, where children in need of a home were cared for by a foster mother. They casually mentioned that there was one little girl left in the home at that time, a three-year-old with whom they had a special bond. In fact, she had been named after their own birth daughter, Nina. While several couples had been interested in adopting this little girl, the couple wanted her to be placed in a Christian home. When my husband and I saw little Nina's picture, our hearts were captured in an instant. God opened doors in a miraculous way, confirming to us that adopting Nina was his plan for the two of us. Eight months later, our daughter arrived from Korea and entered our home and our hearts. In our text, Paul focused on the thought of election and God's sovereignty. Abraham, the father of the Jewish people, had many sons. Paul illustrated divine sovereignty by pointing to God's plan that the messianic line would come through Abraham's son Isaac and Isaac's younger son Jacob. They were chosen. Why was Isaac selected instead of his older brother Ishmael? Why was Jacob chosen instead of his older brother Esau? We don't know, but we understand that it was God's right to choose. At times, we may not understand why God operates the way he does. Situations may come in our lives that do not make sense to us, but God has the right to do what he wishes in order to accomplish his purpose. However, we can be clear about one thing. God has chosen each one of us to be recipients of his salvation. Whether we understand why or not, we have been chosen. Our part is simply to respond with repentance and faith, and then we can enjoy all the blessings that come with being part of God's family. Background Information in chapter 8, Paul had completed his description of how God's righteousness was manifested in Christ and the provision for victory over the power of indwelling sin. However, he seemingly was concerned his readers might conclude that God's plan of justification apart from the law meant that God had rejected the Jews. So in chapter 9, he began a three-chapter segment explaining Israel's role in God's plan. In brief, chapter 9 deals with election and divine sovereignty, chapter 10 with rejection and human responsibility, and chapter 11 with restoration and universal blessing. 
The Apostle opened chapter 9 by expressing his grief at the Jews' downfall and concern for his fellow Israelites, verses 1 through 5. His statement in verse 3 that he could wish himself accursed from Christ for my brethren is similar to that of Moses when he offered to have his name blotted out of God's book in order that Israel be saved. See Exodus 32, 30 through 33. In verses 6 through 13, Paul noted that although Israel failed, God's promises did not. He gave an illustration of God's sovereignty by pointing to the patriarch Abraham. God ordained that the messianic line would come through Isaac, the son of promise, rather than through Abraham's eldest son Ishmael, who was the son of the bondwoman Hagar. He made it clear that the true children of God are the children of promise, those who believe in the God of Abraham, not the children of flesh, those who merely descended from Abraham. In verses 14 through 18, the apostle expanded the concept of God's sovereignty, explaining that it was God's right to reward faith and judge unbelief. In verse 17, Paul referred to Exodus 9:16, where God foretold that Pharaoh would be raised up to display his power and declare his name. Paul used a hypothetical question and the example of the potter's right to determine the shape of a clay vessel to show God's sovereign right to make such choices. See verses 19-21. His point was that it is not God's failure when one resists his will, though God uses that resistance to accomplish his purpose. Paul went on to establish that it is God's right to turn from the unbelieving Jews to believing Gentiles. He quoted two Old Testament prophets to prove that, as foretold by Hosea, O.C., the children of promise are both Jews and Gentiles rather than Jews only. However, according to Isaiah, he says, only a remnant of Israel would be included. See verses 24 through 29. The apostle concluded in verses 30 through 33 that the Gentiles who had no knowledge of the law had received by faith the righteousness which God imparts. By contrast, although the Jews were recipients of the law, they lacked faith, and therefore Christ became a stumbling stone and rock of offense to them, as foretold by Isaiah. See Isaiah 28, 16. Conclusion Although we may not always understand how and why God works as He does, we can rejoice in the fact that we have been chosen to be a part of His family. Romans Chapter 9 I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises? Whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed for ever? Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children, but, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. 
As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay, of the same lump to make one vessel unto honour, and another unto dishonour? What if God, willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles? As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Esaias also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work, and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Esaias said before, Except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma, and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in sign a stumbling stone and rock of offence, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed.